use simple terrain along with miniatures to create your epic encounters in your favorite tabletop games. Hey, today on Bardscraft, I'll make scatter terrain, and I'll use it together with other simple pieces to plan my next D&D session. This build is easy and uses only cheap materials, so if you're new to the hobby, no problem. In that case, do subscribe and like the video if you find it useful. Okay, first we need bases for our terrain. I just cut out weird shapes, some smaller and others bigger. Cardboard works well, but I have something better. I'll use this board for the rest of the bases. This material is a bit tougher and it doesn't warp as much when glue and paint dries on it. Okay, these are enough for what I had in mind. The magical ingredient today is cheap rope. If I remember correctly, this one is sold as flagline. I got this idea when playing with the rope, in order to make these interesting plants or fungi for an underdark setting, I first cut the rope cleanly. Then I opened up the meshwork of the rope like this. Good, then I cut it off here. The next step involves PVA glue. A messy method is to apply glue on your fingers and then spread it on the rope bit. Here I also noticed that the inner part of the rope comes out easily. It looks much better when it's pulled out. Still using my fingers, I shaped it further and then, with a generous application of glue, I attached the rope to the base. Hmm, this one is a bit messy. I made more of these, now with better control and better results. The fibers can be spread across the base, like some sort of roots. When I used longer ropes, this worked even better. What also worked well was to first separate the rope filaments using clean fingers, after that I applied the glue. Here I added two of these on a larger base. While doing this step, make sure to try different shapes. This one can be a closed pod of sorts. On this base I attached the rope in a completely different way, should look good. Look, this one I have already coated in strong wash and it looks really good already. As an alternative to the pricey branded product, you could use wood stain to get a similar effect, or so I've heard. But anyway, I'll try to paint these without using any fancy stuff. Now that the glue has dried, these are quite sturdy. Next I cut some edges off the cardboard in order to make a slope. In this way the pieces will blend in together with other terrain. For covering the bases in something that resembles small rocks and dirt, I chopped up bark. Sand and sawdust also works well, just as long as you use flocking of mixed grain size. After a while, I had something like this. Everything from medium bits to dust, perfect for flocking. Next I covered the surfaces with plenty of glue. You can use a wet brush to spread it out more easily. After that it's easy, just sprinkle on your flocking of choice. I did a small mistake on the two first bases, I covered the roots. I continued and made sure not to get glue over the roots. The corrugated edges of the cardboard must also be covered, remember that. Hmm, I'm slightly looking forward to painting these. I covered the rest in the same way. The ground is easily base coated with cheap acrylic paints. Here some flocking can come off, unless you decided to seal in the flocking with watered down PVA glue, for example. 
I painted these two with cheap acrylics while I decided to cover the rest with the quick shade wash. So I'll compare simplicity to overpriced and messy. The whole idea of washes is to settle into cracks and crevices of textures to create shading and increase contrast. So far I've had good results by applying the wash directly on unpainted surfaces. Previously I've used the wash for a base. Even though it has the exact same name, it's not the same as that one. Because I scammed myself by not reading the product information, I feel quite free to use plenty of this since I don't have many other applications for it. This is oil-based and I don't even have thinner around. Good news is that the quick shade will seal in the bark flocking really well. I'll focus more on the ones painted with the cheap acrylic paints. First I brushed over the ground with little paint on the brush so that the light brown mostly hits the highlights of any textures. To get the same effect as with the quick shade wash, I mixed a simple wash from brown, black and water. This wash is not as strong, so you might have to add many layers. You can experiment by adding more or less paint into the mixture. And if you add a small drop of detergent into the mixture, the wash will flow a bit better. As you might have noticed, the simple techniques such as washes and dry brushing are doing all of the work for me. To start making terrain and miniatures, you don't need artistic skills, so I recommend you give it a try if you already haven't. While the wash dried, I painted these edges with black and realized that these can also be used as monster miniatures. I think I'll use these as some kind of burrowing worms. The fun part is to paint the plants, or fungi, whatever we call them. I first dry brushed with purple, focusing mostly on the bottom of the plant. Here I'm using miniature paints, but I assure you this can be done with cheaper acrylic paints as well. By the way, if you need to get painting or crafting supplies, I have set up links to many exponentially useful goods. Should be useful, especially if you're new to the hobby. Next I dry brushed the upper parts with pink. I like the look of this so far, much better than expected. As you can see, the rope has good textures that makes the painting quite easy. A few more unpainted ones. I decided to use green for these, just cheap acrylic paints this time. The previous plants had a purple-pink gradient, while these are painted green and then yellow. I noticed these are really durable, especially the ones with the tough coat of quickshade. I also gently dry brushed some areas with white, especially on the roots. Almost missed these spots completely. Never thought rope could be used for something this epic. The details are amazing. Click that like to let me know if you agree. On the base of one of the ends I'll include in my encounter, I applied herbs and tea as flocking. I'll do the same for these bases. Some patches of dill and black tea will look good. I applied PVA glue on some areas and then sprinkled on the black tea and dill. Make sure not to cover everything. In that case, all the stone and rubble textures serve no purpose. Okay, I'll play this encounter on a green battle mat. It's a bit too bright, but it's the best I got for this purpose. We are in a twisted forest underground. The blightroot ends are attacking deep from the mistbound woods, accompanied by imps. Imp minis not included, because they are invisible. I'll first place some stone hills around. Remember, this doesn't have to look beautiful. As long as it improves the game quality, all is good. I have these simple black magic craft style trees that I can poke on the hills. These are among my first crafts. It's a very thin forest, but it provides much cover and points of strategic advantage. The players will need it. Then I placed these weird cursed plant scatter pieces around the battlefield. They are mostly for decoration, but do provide hiding spots and cover, and the area of these will be difficult terrain. One of the ends will be stronger, kind of like a boss, and it has the ability to summon sickening roots around one target. I'll use this as the spell marker. The unfortunate adventurer can be placed inside, how immersive. 
We will actually play in an hour. Let's see what happens. Well, the game went well. Players were able to hide and take cover behind the rain. However, this was just sort of a casual encounter on the way, with no other objective than to survive. The party ventured further towards the sacred research hall, now a foul place where imps and necromancers undergo fiendish transformation rituals. Now you can learn more from the beginner playlist here, or you can see how I built the ends I used in this encounter. While you're at it, do subscribe and like this video if you appreciate the content.